Tisa, Dale, or Donnie, or Don, or Tim, or anybody else in there. It's about lifting him up. Amen. Now, now listen to this. Listen to this. Now I'm going to share it. Now I've got 14 points. That was just, right. that was just an introduction. I wrote down and shared this with our, with our folks the other day about, about soul winning. And some of the excuses I've heard over the years. And I just want to share with you, and I'm not, the first one I'm going to expound on for a while, but the next 27 points are very short, I promise you. <laughs> One of the excuses that I heard, now first off, let me say this, Chico, I want to thank God I was, I was saved in a church that taught soul winning. Let me say that first off. You, you see, we, Donnie and I, we found out we do disagree on one, one topic, and that's fine. I, that's all right. People should be wrong. I got no problem with that. All right. There you go. I'm just kidding with you, brother. You know I love you. Yeah. But you know, one thing about it is those Baptists, those, those old quiet Baptists that sang out of hymnals and, and they wouldn't clap if, 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 if they was on fire. I mean, they may be dull and dead and dry, but let me tell you what a Baptist preacher do. He'll teach you how to win somebody to Jesus That's Christ. Right. Oh, they may not be falling out in the spirit. They not may not be shaking around. They may not be speaking in tongues. They may not be hooping and hollering. But they will tell you how to win somebody to Jesus Christ. I want to praise the Lord tonight that Brother Lester Nash, my pastor, taught me how to win somebody to Jesus. We ran 325 in that church. There were six of us up on visitation. I was one of them. I wanted to learn how. Number one, you know, you said last week when I preached, you was tired. You know, I was stepping on everybody's toes. I wasn't trying to step on your toes, brother. That's okay. I was trying to step on your heart. All right, right. come on, man. That's what it's all Amen. about. You know what? And that man stepped on my toes every Sunday yes. morning, every Sunday night, and every Wednesday night. They stepped on my toes in Sunday school, soul winning, go visiting, go on visitation. And after a while, I said, I've had enough of this stuff. I'm going with them. That's Instead right. of running out the door, running and crying, and I can't, can't take this stuff no more. He's always picking on me. I just said, I'm going with them. Amen. <laughs> I learned how to win somebody to the Lord. That's right. That's what it's all about. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. I'm here to tell you, if you've got the Holy Spirit of God on you, Amen. you'll want to share it. If you've got the love of Jesus in your heart, you will want to share it. Amen. You're not going to hide it under a bushel basket. You're going to let it shine. One of the excuses I hear quite often is, well, you know, I'm a new convert, and I don't have the knowledge to be able to win souls. Well, what about the woman at the well? A Samaritan woman at the well, what happened? Jesus walks up and she's drawing some water and he says, give me a drink. And she says, why is this Jew talking to me? I'm a Samaritan. They don't even like me. And he went on to talk and he said, you know, I'm going to give you a drink of water. If you ever take a drink of this, you'll thirst no more. And she says, you know, uh, he, he, he said, he's going to try to put her in a trick bag. He said, let me tell you what. He said, what does your husband think about this? She said, well, I'm not married. He said, no, you're not married. You've been divorced five times and living with a man right now. Come on. And all of a sudden, she thought, man, I'm in the presence of royalty. Amen? That's right. And you know what she did? She yeah, she didn't get mad and cry, did no, she? She didn't. didn't get mad because the, the preacher just stepped on her toes. Uh -huh. She didn't get all down and weeping and, oh, my God, he knows all about me. She went to town and got the people yes. and brought them out. And hundreds was saved yeah. because of her. Amen. You know what, brother? She did not quote one scripture or verse. One verse of scripture, I mean. Did she quote any scriptures? No, she, she said, no, come here, this man who told me all about me. You know, he didn't tell her everything about herself. She kind of, you know, uh, exaggerated a little bit. But they came out. She didn't quote one scripture verse. She was a new convert, and she saw hundreds get saved. Yes. Jesus gets off over in this one place. They said, listen, listen here, uh, Rabbi, you don't want to go up there. There's a guy up there full of demons. <laughs> So he, he's up there, he sits those tombstones, and he, he cuts himself, and he, he makes weird noise. He's naked, he runs around, he cuts his people out. He's just to eat up. And Jesus walked up there, and all of a sudden the demon said to this old boy, the demoniac from Gadarene, he said, Oh, Jesus, what have we got to do with you? They knew who Jesus was. And then all he said, Jesus didn't even say a word. All he said was, Give us a break, would you, Lord? <laughs> He said, instead of casting us into outer darkness, let's go on those pigs over there. And they did. And, of course, they committed suicide. And then it said the man was sitting there in his right mind, clothed in his right mind. You know, all of a sudden he thought, man, you know, he, what happened? He got saved. Amen. Jesus saved him. The old boy said, you know what? I think I want to go with you, Lord. What did Jesus say? Nah. nah go, back. go back to your family and tell them what great things I've done That's for you. It. The man didn't go to seminary. The man didn't go to no theological school. He didn't even have an old, a, a biker New Testament. He didn't have nothing. And the Bible says that he departed and went back to his family. Yes, he did. Now, you're going to tell me, well, I can't tell nobody about Jesus because
because I'm a new convert and I just don't know how. Baloney. That's right. Baloney. I got saved on a Wednesday night. I worked at DNT Plumbing Company. I walked in the next morning and Bill Butler, I shared this with you guys today. He was just the most. I can't explain it, man. It just gets on your nerves. One of them guys just get on your nerves. He was mean and he was hateful. Mm -hmm. I walked in that morning. I got saved on a Wednesday night. I walked in Thursday morning, 7 o'clock, DNT Plumbing, and Bill Butler said, What's wrong with you? <laughs> you get a haircut, you shave. What's wrong with you? <laughs> That's right. Nothing wrong with me. He said it again. I thought, you know, I'm, I'm serious. I said, Are you saved? He looked at me like, What? I said, Are you saved? He said, Yes. I said, You mean you're a Christian? He said, Shock me. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Are you saved? He said, Yes. He said, Actually, there's a little Bible, I mean, a little church down in Rothmuth that closed down, and my family goes down there, and we have services. Yes, I'm saved. And I'm not kidding you, I walked by his desk and I said, well, praise the Lord, man. I've been saved, what, 12 hours. Thank you, Jesus. I walked on by and Lula May is her name. I couldn't think of it so. Lula May. Oh, a woman man come out. She's about 80, 89, 105, something like that. She's old. <laughs> she never calls by her first name. She calls by her last name. She said, Powell, what's wrong with you? Uh -huh. Nothing. Am I late? I ain't turned my paperwork in right. There's something different about you. What's wrong with you? I said, are you saved? Yeah, all right. She said, well, yes, I am. I said, well, I got saved. And I'm going to tell you what, that's where it went all that day long. You. you say, oh, well, brother, what scripture did you use? I mean, oh, brother, what did you do? What did you do? I didn't tell them nothing. I said, I just said, I got saved. Are you saved? Amen. Well, what would you have done if they hadn't been saved? I'd say, well, come on, I'll take you to somebody and I'll show you how to be saved. Or I'd already remembered in that 12-hour period exactly what that woman told me when I got saved. That's right. She said, you believe you're a sinner? I said, I know I'm a sinner. Well, do you believe that Jesus Christ can forgive you your sins? Yes, I do. Well, if you believe he can come live in your heart and save you your sins? Yes, I do. Would you call upon him and confess his name and believe in your heart? I said, yes, I do. And I prayed that prayer and I got saved. And you know, I mean, it was only 12 hours earlier. I mean, I remember that, right? Right. I, I mean, I, I can't go out and witness because, you know, I'm a new convert. I don't have any knowledge. Baloney. Second one, I don't have the gift of soul winning. It's not a gift, it's a command. Hey, come on. Everybody says, oh, well, there's gifts of the Spirit. There's gifts of the Spirit, and then there is fruit of the Christian. You see, the fruit of the Spirit is, you know, loving, kindness, and on and on and on, temperance and whatever. And that's the fruit of the Spirit. But let's not get that messed up with the fruit of the Christian. You see, the Christian is to bear fruit. That's soul when it's reproducing. That's bringing people into the family. Amen? Amen? Listen, the Bible says in John 15, 16, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and to what? To bear fruit. So then we see that, oh, I don't have the gift of soul, and you don't need a gift. There's three commandments he gives us. He says, I want you to be baptized. He did that today. Amen. I want you to take the Lord's Supper. We did that last Sunday. And I want you to be a soul winner. Come on. Amen. Amen. Am I stopping on your feet or am I getting into your heart? Because you see, the big difference is, the big difference is, we've got to get the soul winning from here down to here. Amen. If you do these three things, just, just remember these three things real quick. If you do these three things, when Jesus looked out over the people and he says, man, he said, look at all those sheep gone astray. First thing you need to do, you need to visualize, see that they're lost. You need to agonize. Oh, man, that hurts my heart to hear one of my brothers died. Man, didn't know Jesus Christ. And we got to evangelize, brother. All right. I'm telling you, visualize, see what's going on out here. Those people that are over don't really give a rip what I'm preaching right now, but I care about them. <laughs> Right. <coughs> Agonized. My next door neighbor died. I lived there for four years. I was in a backslid condition. I never shared Jesus Christ with him, and it tears me up. Agonize over those lost people, and then evangelize. Then no. the third thing is, he's well, I can't go soul winning because I win souls through my church. This is going to be a short point. I win souls through my church. In other words, I pay Coach East to do it. I pay the pastors to do it. We got to win them collectively. Amen. There is a Hebrew word that covers that. That covers that thinking. It's called baloney. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. The church does not lay up treasures in heaven, brother, collectively. We lay up treasures individually. Yes, amen. Huh? 
That'll pop Joel Osteen's bubble. Yes, it will. I'm here to tell you right now, brothers and sisters, it's one on one. It's a personal relationship. It's what it is. That's right. Number four. Another reason why I don't go so winning is I'm going to be led by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I want some kind of a mystical feeling to be on me when I talk to somebody about Jesus. Talk to them about Jesus and a mystical feeling will get on you. That's Amen. right. And you'll say, oh, you really believe it? Yes, uh, Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Go ye therefore into all the world, what? Making disciples, baptizing and teaching. And then here comes that mystical spirit like turning the air fist into high. And Jesus said, and lo, I will be with you always, even until the end of the world. If that, let me teach you, if that doesn't light your fire, your wood's wet. Come on. <laughs> Amen. You want a mystical feeling? I can't witness to somebody unless the Holy Spirit is leading me. He's leading you right here through the words of God. Amen. Amen. Fifth thing. Dang, I'm going fast. I need to slow down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't want to go so winning because I don't know how. Well, you dummy. <laughs> well, you've been doing since you've been saved. Huh? What have you been doing? Well, Donnie ain't preached on the last six months. Well, shame on you. We don't smack you around for that. I mean, I mean, that's where they get all their teaching from. I mean, that's 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 all they ever get is just from you. I mean, I mean, do they? Oh. Oh, you know what? They don't take the Bible off the dash of their car when they leave here. They leave their. And see, it looks spiritual. They pull in on a job the next day. You know, <laughs> my Bible's still on the dash of the car, or it's in the back of the car. That's the reason why you're not learning anything because you're not reading the Word of God. It's not His right. job. Come on. Now, he needs to be teaching on soul winning. Don't get me wrong. That's right. You need to learn on your own. That's it. You say, brother, I don't know how to win somebody to Jesus. Well, let me tell you what, brother. All you got to do is learn how to reproduce. All you got to do is share what somebody's already done, but you done to you. Fifth, sixth thing. This is my favorite one. I shared this with Chip here the other day. Here's what I like right here. Well, brother, and I'm serious, Coach East. I'm very serious about this thing. I would talk to them about the Lord, but I'm afraid it, it would push them further away from God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're, all, they're, they're all already they're already out there. They don't really like church, and, and, and they don't like preachers, and they don't, they don't like nothing. And if I talk to them about God, it's going to push them further away. Hmm. Now, the Bible says that we are dead in our trespasses and sins. Amen. Uh, Amen. They find that. Ephesians 2 5, we are dead in our sins when Christ made us alive. Now let me get this right, Chico. If the man's already dead, and if I talk to him about Jesus, is he going to make him more deader? <laughs> huh? How do you conjugate that vow? Dead, deader, deader? <laughs> uh, you go into the funeral home and there's a man laying up there in the coffin and he's dying and he's been embalmed. I mean, he's dead. And he said, I'm going to make sure. He he's not going to get any more dead. They're dead in their sins, brothers and sisters. And by, by you sharing God with them, it's not going to make them any more dead than they already are. Come on. Number Mike V11. Never come alive. That's right. Amen. Oh, what V11 is number seven, right? Right. V11. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I, I, I want to see them saved, but I don't want to get them saved too early. What? Yeah. <laughs> Some of the greatest preachers I ever known was saved in his 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 years old. Yeah. Amen. How many of you guys saved before you were 10? Huh? Can I talk you out of it? No. Huh? No. Did somebody pick you green when they picked the fruit? No. So again, there's that Hebrew word, baloney. I'm telling you, young people that's been brought up in, in the Christ and knows the Lord and come to church, they're not too young. They can understand the simple plan of salvation. They understand that the difference between good and wrong and uh, good and bad, right and wrong. Number eight. Well, I'm going to tell you the reason why I don't soul win coaches. Well, I can hear some of you saying, hey, God's guy saying this already. You know, I'm picking on you because you picked on me a while ago, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, brother, I, I want to make disciples, not just decisions. Uh -huh. uh, I, I, I want to make sure that when I'm leading somebody to Jesus, I'll make sure that they become a disciple. I'm not interested in some people just making a decision. Let me give you a little hint right here. You cannot make become a disciple until you make a decision. That's the whole problem with people. People
People are walking in the church house doors and coming in and joining the Sunday school class and they're, they're joining the choir. And by the way, what a beautiful choir we had a while ago. And then Don even helped me when she got up there. Man, yes. you guys were pretty. They're I'm telling you what, that was, it was awesome choir. They come in, they join the choir, they join the Sunday school class, they, they do all of these things and they become a disciple. But the problem is they never made a decision. I'm telling you, people are not, listen, brothers and sisters, I... I'm not picking on the light of the world ministry. I'm not picking on any church. I'm just saying we've got to give people an opportunity to get saved. Amen. It's like, it's like you know, I hear preachers, the, the independent Baptist preachers, they're preaching against smoking and drinking and cussing and raising hell and, and what all this. They preach nothing against all that, but they never give an invitation for somebody to give it up. All right. Come on. Huh? It's like if somebody's addicted to something, why don't we give them an opportunity to come forward and leave them an opportunity to give it up? Now I'm not saying you got to quit smoking, drinking, and raising hell. Don't do whatever you want to do. I don't care. I am just saying between you and God. I know some of you ain't never heard nothing like it before. Hello. Come on. <laughs> Tell the truth. Number nine. <laughs> well, brother, I don't sow wind because some are called to sow and some are called to reap. I think the Bible says we're all called to sow. And we're all called to reap. That's right. Now I know what they're doing. They're saying that that Paul sowed, and it said that Apollos was it Apollos. He watered, and God gave the increase. But it could have been reversed. That's right. You know, it does. It, it, it's calling us all to sow the seed. It's calling us all to water the seed. And then my last point. Aren't you glad? Number ten, the big X. Well, brother. I would be a soul winner. I would share Jesus. And I just try to live a life before them and let them see that I'm saved. You know, it's best sometimes to keep my mouth shut. Just let them see how holy I really am. <laughs>